you always replace equivalent parts of an equation with equivalent things. Well, let's compute something. Uh, 12 times 13 is congruent to what modulo 10? Well, 12 is congruent to 2 modulo 10. Uh, 13 is congruent to 3 modulo 10. So 12 times 13 is, uh, well, 12 times 13 will be congruent to 2 times 3 uh, modulo 10. And that's pretty easy. That's the same thing as 6. And I mean, sure enough, if I actually multiply it out, I mean, 12 times 13 is, is actually equal to 156. Uh, and sure enough, right, I mean, 6 is uh, congruent to 156 modulo 10. So that seems to be fine. Let's try another example. Okay, let's compute uh, 12 to the uh, 13th power. Well, 12 is uh, 2 modulo 10. 13 is uh, 3 modulo 10. Uh, and 2 to the third, that is 8. So if we can uh, just replace equal things for equal things, or equivalent things for equivalent things, then 12 to the 13th should be 8 modulo 10. You might be worried at this point, so we'll try that again. Well, let's compute 12 to the 13th a, a different way. Uh, 12 to the 13th power will be the same thing as uh, 2 to the 13th power modulo 10. Um, ooh, I can calculate 2 to the 13th. Right? That's the same as 2 to the 10th times 2 to the 3rd. 2 to the 10th is 1,024. 2 to the 3rd is 8. This is 8,192 modulo 10. So uh, 12 to the 13th is 8,192 modulo 10. That is the same thing as 2 modulo 10. So something went wrong. Well, the problem is that 8 and 2 are not congruent modulo 10. So it can't be the case that both this statement and this statement are true. Now, what is true is this statement. It is the case that 12 to the 13th power is 2 modulo 10, but it's not the case that 12 to the 13th is 8 modulo 10. So let's try to figure out what went wrong. I mean, there's many theorems here, but there's one theorem in particular that I want us to focus on. Well, here's the theorem for, for multiplication. Theorem, if A is congruent to B modulo M and C is congruent to D modulo M, then A times C is congruent to B times D modulo M. Why is this such an important theorem? Well, it's a theorem that's telling us that we can replace equivalent things for equivalent things and get an equivalent answer, right? as long as we're doing multiplication. Right here, A is the same as B, modulo M, and C is the same as D, modulo M. And here I've got two multiplication computations. Here I'm multiplying A times C, here I'm multiplying B times D. But what I've done is replaced equivalent things. A is being replaced by B, C is being replaced by D and I'm getting an equivalent answer. A times C is the same as B times D working modulo M. This is such an important idea that we give it a fancy name. And that fancy name is well-defined. Right? This is a theorem that's asserting multiplication modulo M is a well-defined operation. So what about exponentiation? Well, if we wanted to try to write down a theorem that's asserting exponentiation is well-defined, it would start off the same way. A is congruent to B mod M, C is congruent to D mod M, but the conclusion would look like this. Right, we would want to conclude that A to the C is congruent to B to the D mod M. This is the claim that exponentiation is a well-defined operation. But this claim is, is not true. It's not a theorem. Uh, and, and of course, it doesn't mean that you can't find examples where A to the C is congruent to B to the D mod M. That, that might happen accidentally. But in general, this statement doesn't hold. And consequently, exponentiation is not a well-defined operation. So let's summarize. When you're doing a computation, uh, you might take some piece of that computation and replace it with something that's equivalent in some sense. Do you then get an equivalent result? That's well-definedness. So when you're confronted with various operations, you should ask yourself, is this operation well-defined? Is this operation not well-defined? Another way to think about it is with uh, names. You might think about uh, the objects that you're calculating with as having uh, potentially different names. If you change the name that you're using to, to get a handle on that object, and if you change that name and then perform the operation, do you get the same result? Well, you might not get the same result on the nose, but maybe you'll get another name for the same underlying result. Right? That's one way to think about well-defined.